1.4 continued. This time we'll be factoring binomials. There are three types of binomials that we can factor. The first is the binomial called the difference of two squares. Now, to verify that you're actually dealing with the difference of two squares, you have to just first make sure there's a negative in between. And lastly, that you're dealing with squares. The how you can tell that you're dealing with squares is that all the terms must be able to be simplified with the square root. If everything in here and everything in here can be simplified with a square root, those are terms. If there's one number inside here or any variable that you cannot take the square root of, then you cannot use this process. So this is the first thing you do, just make sure you can take the square root of everything. When you take the square root of this, it simplifies all down to A, and then minus, and then all this simplifies down to B. So this will be your first expression right here with these two terms in it. Then from here, your second expression will be the same two terms from here, same two terms right here, but just with a plus sign in between. Okay, and this is factoring binomials. Or in other words, this is what this used to be before multiplication. When you multiply this, you get this. So factoring reverses the process of multiplication. Takes you back to what it used to be before multiplication. Secondly, there is the difference of two cubes. Now, to make sure that you have a difference of two cubes, the first thing you check out is that you have a minus sign in between, right there. And the next thing you look for is make sure that all of these are perfect cubes. To check out, to see if something is a perfect cube, you, you put everything in a cube root. If after you put all of this into the cube root and it will simplify, then it'll factor this way. You simpl this simplified in the cube root will give you A minus, all of this simplified will be, give you B. And this is how you get your first term right here, or your first um, expression. The second part of the expression will be made from this. It'll be this A, whatever this first term, squared, plus these two terms multiplied, so A times B, and then your last term squared, so that'll be plus B squared. And this will be what this used to be. This over here, this, these two was what this used to be before multiplication. The third one is the sum of two cubes. This can also be factored. And again, we check out to make sure these are cubes by making sure they, they can be simplified using this, the cube root. Once you've verified all this simplifies, that simplifies down to an A, this simplifies down to a B. Then you take your terms, A and B, your first and second term, and the next part will go first term squared minus first term times second term plus second term squared. Okay, so these are the three processes. And remember, there is no um, factoring of a binomial if your terms are squared, this should be a B, and there's a plus in between. If there's a plus in between, then this one cannot be done. Only this type can be done. All right, now let's take a look at some problems. Let's factor x squared minus 25 and 49 x squared minus 9y to the fourth z squared. Okay. This looks like the difference of two squares. I'll check it out by um, seeing if everything simplifies in a square root. And it does, because the square root of x squared is x minus the square root of 25 is 5. So everything does simplify using the square root. The second piece will be a plus b. So here's your a, here's your b. So a plus b will be x plus 5. Next one. What we have here. Um, it looks like the difference of two squares. If it really is, then we should be able to take the square root of everything. Let's check it out. The square root of 49, that's 7. The square root of x squared is x. Then minus square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y to the fourth is y squared. And the square root of z squared is z. So it really does work out. All those are perfect squares. Then the next part would be a plus b part. This is a, this is b. So this will be 7x plus 3y squared. Z. Okay. Next. 
let's factor x cubed minus 125 and 8x to the 6th power minus 27y to the 3rd power. Now this is a difference problem, but this looks like a cube. And so we're going to use number 2, the difference of 2 cubes. Now to see if that really works, or we can apply that, everything must be simplified through a cube root. So the cube root of x is x minus the cube root of 125 is 5. So everything does work through the, is simplified through the cube root. So we can keep going with the second part, which says we need a squared plus a times b and then plus b squared. Okay, this represents the a, so a squared is x squared. a times b is represented by x times 5. So that's plus 5x. And b squared is represented by 5 squared, which is 25. And that's it. Next, let's try this one. This looks like a difference problem, and these look like cubes. So we're going to simplify this, see if this simplifies with the cube root. So the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the 6th power is x squared minus the cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of y to the third power will be y. So all that simplifies. Now I'll finish this out by squaring the first term, then multiplying the first and second term, and then squaring the last term. So we'll square the 2x squared, which will get 4x to the fourth power, plus, then we'll multiply the a and the b term, we'll get 6x squared and y. Note that we're not using the negative at all. We're making sure the pattern always ends up being a negative, positive, plus, plus. That's why we're not using this negative in the process here, because we want this to be a negative, positive, positive. And lastly, we b squared. So this 3 squared is 9, and the y squared finishes out the problem. Number 5. Oh. Number five, it's going off the page. Let's see if we can go a little further down here. Adjust this a bit. Okay. Number five, x cubed plus 64. And number six will be 125 x to the ninth power, y to the sixth power, plus eight, z to the third power. Okay. Again, this is the sum of two cubes, so again, we're going to make sure we take the cube root of all pieces, and this will be, let's see, can you see that? Yes, you can. Um, the cube root of this will be x, the cube root of 64 will be 4. Okay, so that's my a plus b, a plus b. Now I need my a squared minus ab plus b squared, so a is going to be x, so square it. Next, I need minus. And then the AB, so this will be A, this will be B, so 4X, and plus B squared, so 4 squared will be 16. And that is factored. So this used to be this times this. Lastly, uh, we have a summation, so we're going to try to use this one right here. So we're going to run everything through the cube root. So the cube root of 125 is 5. The cube root of x to the ninth will be x to the third power. The cube root of y to the sixth will be y to the second power. Plus, the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of z to the third power is just z. That's my first portion. Now, um, I want to um, take my a term and square it. So this is all a. So when I square the 5, I get 25. When I square the x to the third, we get x to the sixth. And when I square y to the second, we get y to the fourth. Then we need minus, and then a times b. Well, this is a and this is b. When you multiply them, you're going to get 10. The x cubed, the y squared, and the z. And then plus b squared. We're kind of out of room here, so we're going to put plus down here. And this is b, so when you square it, you're going to get 4z squared. 4z squared. And that's the end of lesson 4.1.